Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Yes, Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. I'm Joel Brzezinski. And Mike Kapler is with me. And we've got another edition of Growing in Grace, where we uh, look at the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God's grace, the gospel of God's peace. We have peace with God, Cap, and that's a good thing to know. That's a good thing to be assured of. I know that over the years, talking it over with you on this weekly podcast, I've become more and more assured of it as uh, time goes on. Yeah. I think one thing that we want to focus on here as much as anything else is who are we in Christ? If you're new to the program, welcome aboard. We've got all of our past programs at growingandgrace.org, and you're welcome to check those out anytime. Each weekly podcast, uh, just a little under 15 minutes. We're just excited to be able to invade your territory for uh, this brief little period every week to try and make sure that our thinking is right which is something we've been talking about quite a bit the past several weeks, Joel, trying to get our thinking right about what the gospel is, because religion will come from all kinds of different angles. i got to be honest with you, a lot of what I've heard in churches over the years, not all of it, not every church, but by and large, as a whole, sometimes I would walk out more discouraged than when I went in, or with more questions than answers you know, coming out. So we hope to be able to provide you with some things that maybe you didn't hear going to church all of your life. And so I, I think there's just a lot of people out there spinning their wheels in Christianity. and You know, they're, they're well-intentioned people who are, are trying to seek some answers. The answers are not really all that mysterious. God ha- is not trying to hide anything from us. Things have been revealed that a lot of people just don't understand because they take a look at the Bible. I'm holding the Bible in my hand right now. It's got uh, Genesis and... Exodus and the whole Old Testament, and then we come to this New Testament thing, and we just kind of mesh them all together without understanding the difference between the two. And I I think that's one of the things, Joel, personally, I think it's one of the things that has caused more confusion in the minds of believers today, not understanding the difference between the Old and the New Covenant. But we've been talking about thinking, and uh, we're going to address some more things like that. I know you had a, a story you wanted to share, Joel. Yeah, a couple of them really. One of them is real quick. But yeah, so much of our life in Christ, I mean, as we've been talking about, it, it gets back to, like what you were talking about there in um, churches that uh, people leave more discouraged than when they got there. It It's all because of what they're taught to think. When, when you go sit down in that church service, and then when you leave, the main thing that happens is that you're hearing things that make you think. And so if the things that you are hearing cause your thinking to make you more and more discouraged, then you know you're not under a very good teaching that's not leading you to think uh, the right way. Well, anyway, several years ago when my son was four years old, for me as a dad, this was just funny, and I I think some people might get a kick out of this, but anyway, he came up to me, he's four four years old, he said, Daddy, I try to stop thinking, but I can't. And I wasn't sure exactly if I'd heard him right. So I said, what? He said, I try to stop, but it keeps doing it. (laughs) And I replied, what keeps doing it? He said, my head. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I know that it's it's true for all of, I mean, that's just from a four-year-old there. But this thinker, this mind that we've got that's always thinking about things, there's no switch to turn it off. We can't really turn it off, but one thing that we can do is try to direct our thinking into, like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, into the truth, in, into what's true. And uh, the other story was, um, there's uh, this lady that I see on my, on my job. Uh, she cleans a couple of the different clinics that I go to, and I run into her now and then. We get to talking sometimes, and I don't know how we got to talking about this, but she shared with me how, you know, she's a, she's a worrier. She says, I'm a worrier. I, not a warrior, a worrier. <laughs> she, she she says she thinks way too much about things. And uh, we were talking one time, she said that some, you know, she'll focus on one thing 
and she'll be obsessed with that one thing all day long, and then, and she'll let it bother her all day long, and then that one thought will lead to a whole bunch of other thoughts, and by the end of the day, she's all overwhelmed by all these thoughts going around her head, <laughs> and, and uh, it, really, it's all rooted in, it began in that one thought where she she wasn't in charge of her thinking, you know, she was just letting her thinking get the best of her. And it was funny too, because after I got done talking with her about that, I, I came home and my daughter was eating this, uh, these little dove candies. They're individually wrapped and you open up the wrapper and it's got a saying on it. And, uh, the saying <laughs> on the wrapper, it said, don't think about it so much. <laughs> and so I <laughs> saved that, I saved that wrapper and I gave it to my, uh, house cleaning lady friend that was it was funny uh but yeah it just goes to show that again we can't turn off our mind we can't turn off that thinker but we can try to direct our thinking into the truth and and i think that's one thing we try to do every week here on growing in grace yeah I, and i can relate to some of that i mean it's it's hard sometimes not to worry you know, let things start eating away at you how are we going to make the bills this month or how am I going to get that car fixed? How are we going to get the kids through college? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things it's in this life. Yep. And, and, then, and then if you start thinking about spiritual things and, and you, you, you're you trying to get questions answered and that sort of thing, we we know sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's like maybe that's why, uh, you know, some people like they like to meditate. They like to try and get off by themselves and just get focused. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. But there are a lot of people who, who question where they stand with God today because they, they haven't heard the, the gospel that you and I have been talking about all these years. And you and I, of course, over a, a long period of time, have had time to, to meditate and think on these things. And, and, you know, somewhere along the line, of course, both of us heard the good news, the real gospel, the grace of God and his unconditional love. We heard that message somewhere along the way for the first time. We were attracted to it like a magnet and decided within our own heart to pursue what really is truth. Again, you've heard us say this before. We're just a couple of guys here talking these things out. We're not here to tell everybody what the truth is on everything because we haven't cornered that market. Neither has anybody else. But there are some real fundamental ABCs regarding the good news of the gospel that, that we have grown into. But for those who haven't, they might be wondering, where do, where do I stand with God today? And, and that's a, not necessarily a, a great place to be, and that can cause a lot of emotional turmoil. We were talking in recent weeks about the fact that you and I were created in the image of God. God is a spirit. You and I are spirits. We also have this thing we call the, the soul, which is more of a makeup of our personality, our, our emotion, our will, the way we think. Uh, and, of course, we live in a body. So it's not that we're spirit, soul, and body. We are a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a physical body that gives us contact in this, in this physical world. But I heard somebody say something years ago, Joel, and it stuck with me for a long, long time. And that is that God, who is a spirit, and all things were created by him, this world that we're living in now, this physical world here on earth, uh, living in these bodies that are going to die and are dying, the spiritual world is, is more real than even this physical world. It's almost like we're just living in a toy land here right now. And, and so coming into contact with our, our innermost being is something that can be done through the knowledge of what God has informed us with in the Scripture about who we are in Christ. There are a lot of people out there who are seeking things from God that He has provided for them. There are those who are just seeking God in general. You know, here's the thing. God isn't hiding from you. The, the very first game of hide and seek, Adam and God in the garden, right? <laughs> After man sinned, Adam hid. Uh, he was ashamed. And who was looking for him? It wasn't Adam looking for God. God wasn't hiding, and he never has. God was seeking him. And that's the way it is today. Th think of the story of the prodigal son, Joel. The son, he, he ran off, he took his inheritance, he went and squandered it, lived his own life the way he wanted to live it. When it was all said and done, he realized it was, it was all just stupid. And so he said, I, I, I'll go back as a hired hand and work for my father. Here he comes up the sidewalk, father sees him, and it was the father who ran to him. That's what the story is about. It's not about the son coming home so much. It's, it's about the father's love for the son 
and he ran to him. The son started telling him, hey, you know, Father, I want to apologize. And, and God cut him off. He wouldn't even let him finish, and he just welcomed him home. That's just so awesome because so many times we have we get this feeling that God's hiding things from us or he's hiding himself from us, perhaps because we don't understand certain things, but he's not. All the things that were hidden have been revealed. And so God's not hiding things from us, but they are there for us really in plain sight, there's a lot of distractions. I think we have a lot of distractions, whether it's negative thinking or negative circumstances in our lives, and those things are real. I don't want to diminish those things at all, but the reality of what's going on in, in the spirit world, in the, the being that we are as, as spirits who, like you say, have a soul and live in a body, those things that are going on in the spirit world are really real, and I think you're right. Uh, we can get in touch with these things through believing the truth of what we have. Just as one example, and we got to wrap things up here uh, shortly here, but, you know, Paul said in uh, Philippians 4, 8, finally, uh, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, think on these things, or in the New King James, it says meditate on these things. That word means take into account, reckon, weigh these things out, consider them, deliberate upon them. Why? Because so much of understanding our relationship with God and experiencing the good things that God has already provided for us comes through what we think. It's already there, we already have it. God's already given it to us. But to experience it, it's good to think on these things, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, of any, anything of virtue or, or praiseworthy. Think on these things because that is where we'll find the heart of God. That's where we'll find that we can relate to God. Yeah, First John chapter 5, 17, or is it 4, 17? Love has been perfected among us in this day that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. And there is no fear in love, uh, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. And he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So good things to think about. Yeah, what Joel was talking about there, remember who you are. There will be struggles in this life, and there will be challenges emotionally and otherwise. But fall back on the truth of, of what you know, the good news in your spirit. As we mentioned, you're in Christ. He is in you, and nothing can ever take that away. Ah, well, those are great words to end with, Cap. But wrapping up our thoughts on thinking, a nice little series that we've done here. And speaking of doing a series... You know, a lot of times we'll do a, a series on a certain subject here on Growing in Grace, or many churches will preach a series of sermons on a certain subject. But what about doing a series on grace? You might be surprised to find out that Cap and I, we're not necessarily down with that idea. <laughs> so what's so wrong with preaching a series on grace? If you want to find out our thoughts on that, tune in next week right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.